Both these bunches of bananas were bought at a local supermarket. These bananas show the fair trade mark, a guarantee that the farmers who grew them got a fair deal and cost £1.39 per kilogram. These bananas don't have any such guarantee and cost 95 pence per kilogram. What price are your bananas? You may not be aware that as well as the price you pay, there is a hidden cost that lies beneath the skin. So let's peel back that skin and take a look. This is Drissa, a cocoa slave from Mali, one of the people who grow the cocoa for your chocolate. Because it is not just bananas that have a hidden cost, but other luxury items such as tea, coffee, sugar and chocolate. Slavery still exists today and it is poverty that allows it to perpetuate. It is a fact that developing countries lose more income due to unfair trade rules than all the money given to them in aid. What we have seen in the windwards because of this challenge to the banana regime by the United States and other banana producing countries in Central and South America is a decline in production, a fall in farming population, a decrease in the standard of living of the people and even an entire economy has been affected by it. I would say had it not been for the fair trade sales, um, we would have been out of the banana industry by now because virtually all our bananas are now grown under fair trade condition and we sell probably about 65% of, of our production as fair trade. By buying fair trade products, you are not only sending out a clear message to the world that you disagree with the present unjust trade rules, but you are also helping millions of farmers, workers and their families to escape poverty right now. In Ghana at present, there are people growing cocoa for our chocolate that don't even have access to clean water, and fair trade can change that. On trade justice, it's interesting to note that 200 years ago, the slave trade abolitionists called for a boycott of West Indian sugar produced by slaves. They stated that just because this government licenses this inhumanity does not mean that people have to be a part of it. In the same way today, the WTO licenses the inhumanity resulting from the present trading system, but we can avoid being a part of it by buying fair trade products. 2007 marks the bicentenary of the abolition of the British Atlantic slave trade. This memorial to the slaves stands at Lancaster Quay, which was the fourth biggest slave trade port in Britain. 25 ships sailed from here, carrying a total of 5,034 slaves. We cannot name each one, but at least we can count them down to the last man, woman and child. Ten and a half million slaves were taken across the Atlantic in ships that sailed from ports like the one that stood here in Lancaster. Inside Lancaster Maritime Museum is a portrait of a Quaker. Quakers founded and strongly supported the abolition campaign. But Dobson Foster was not an abolitionist, he was a slave trader. This suggests that slave traders were not deliberately evil people but simply oblivious to the immorality of their actions. The church at Cape Coast Castle is built above the dungeons where the slaves were kept before making their tragic journey. This was a deliberate act of dominance, but what went on in the minds of those who worshipped as the slaves lay suffering beneath them? The abolitionists used this image to expose the immorality which is now so clear to us. We must do the same and perhaps 200 years from now people will look back at us and say we were not evil but simply oblivious to our actions. It is simply immoral that people should be allowed to suffer in order to provide us with luxuries like tea, coffee, sugar and chocolate at a cheap price. That was the message of the slave trade abolitionists but shamefully it's just as relevant today. You don't have to be a part of this. As a consumer, you can buy products that carry the fair trade mark. You can make a difference.